All right, your 2005 to 2009 Ford Mustang GT S197. 15 problems plus that you'll have with this car. One of the first common problems is the faded headlights. The faded headlights are an easy fix. Now I've heard some people say they don't have to take the bumper off to do these headlights, but you do. There are brackets located here that you remove from the wheel well. I think they're, I don't know, 10 millimeter. You could, should buy those replacement brackets also, 20 bucks on, online and you can get them. You can find these headlights pretty cheap. You can get them on like Marketplace for 50 bucks for a nice set, but these are the top connections and this is the bottom. You can upgrade and replace them with halos or LEDs, uh, but it's a real nice touch, but that's one of the first problems you'll see on a 05 to 09. Another common problem is the under the hood rust on the, uh, they're steel hoods, I believe, and you'll see the rust coming up. Easy fix on that is a body shop, uh, repaint, get all the rust off, or just replace it with a fiberglass hood. Another issue is these windshield wiper arms constantly fading and chipping and they turn real ugly. You have to get a removal tool to take them off from here, but they're easily replaced or painted. Another item to replace that you might not like are the tail lights, and you can always upgrade those. All right, let's move to the engine. Now the engine on these cars, the 4.6 V8, is pretty rock solid, but one of the main problems you'll have with the 05 to early 07 are the two-piece spark plugs. For that, you really want to prep the car before you change the spark plugs if they've never been done before, or get a professional shop to do it. What we did on another GT is we soaked the spark plug uh, area after pulling out the coil packs with a uh, seafoam lubricant, left it overnight, came back the next day, sucked out the lube and debris with a hose, and then broke them free, and they all came free. Another common issue with these 4.6, even low mileage ones, are the cam phasers. You know, the cam phasers, it's obviously a three valve, dual timing, dual cam phaser. When the cam phasers fail, this engine will set off numerous engine codes and you must address it pretty quickly. It's pretty easy to remove the valve covers and do one cam phaser without taking anything else off except for the cam phaser bolt and a timing, using a timing chain wedge. However, if you have a timing chain guide failure, which is also uh, something that happens on these cars, you're gonna have to remove the whole timing chain cover and redo the whole timing chain uh, guide set. It's actually pretty easy, it's just time consuming. And you do have to remove the whole front end of the uh, car here, the, all the parts. Uh, another common failure is, or code, is the throttle body getting stuck. That's usually just a cleaning or the sensor. Uh, you'll have the mass airflow sensor will go bad uh, many times. Another common problem is the water pump. And the water pump does have a seepage hole and you'll know that it's leaking and you'll find it and you'll have to replace the uh, water pump. Pretty easy job. Just again, it's a pain to get to it. Another common problem is under the intake, there is a elbow, a plastic elbow, $25 part that fails constantly on these cars. That's when you're leaking radiator fluid and you can't figure out where it's coming from, but you can smell it. And to get to it, like I said, you got to remove the whole intake, throttle body, air intake. Another internal failure are the oil pumps. The oil pumps in these cars are not very good. If you have to do the timing chain, you should do the oil pump. And you also must examine or figure out how to get to the oil pump pickup tube because that thing clogs constantly. It's just, in my opinion, not a good design. And to get to that, you got to get the car up and get the oil pan off, and it's a real, real pain in the butt. Um, another issue with these cars is the uh, bypass hose here, the intake hose that goes from here to your valve cover. What happens is, is this, this will generate oil that goes into your intake that then clogs your valves. For that, you're going to need a uh, catch can, and I do highly recommend the catch can. It does make a difference, and you will 
be shocked at the amount of oil that goes into the catch cam. And then you have your general failures like the alternator fails and to get to that you got to take off some stuff here in the front and the throttle body because it's under there. Now one of the main issues for the interior. The interior many times will flood and it floods because of this cow. There are two rubber plugs inside this cow that catch water. If this thing gets clogged with leaves or branches, the water then rises up and rolls over into your uh, interior, getting your floorboard wet. And I know a lot of you always are asking, how come my floorboard is wet? Well, this is one of the reasons why. Now you can get to these two plugs by reaching down under the firewall and yanking them out, or you can go into the cow. You have a cabin air filter located right there, and if your interior stinks or it's never been changed, go ahead and remove this cow with some plastic clips. However, pull these out. Now, I've been told, ah, you gotta put it back in. Why? Why would you put this dumb thing back in? No way. I've pulled those plugs out, and two gallons of water have spilt out onto the floor when people have me look at their uh, 05 or 06 or up to 09 Mustangs. It's just a strange design. All right, let's move into the interior. By the way, that's my anti-carjacking device that's installed in this car. Here's where that water will come in. It'll come in, spill onto the floor, and there's a fuse box over here to the right. If it's not addressed, it could reach that fuse box and cause all kinds of electrical problems like intermittent horn, intermittent lights, radio on and off, heat, air conditioning not working correctly. So you definitely need to fix that right away. One of the other common leaks is the window seal. And you'll have to replace the window seal. Pretty easy. There are also plugs under the door. I don't know if you could see them. Right, well, I don't know if you can see them, but anyway, there are plugs under the doors and you can pull those plugs out. And when you pull it, there it is. When you pull the plug out, that holds water too. Get the water out that way if you hear water in your door. Now, another thing with these S197s, they're not equipped with a, uh, with a trunk button. So I installed a trunk button, ground wire to the back, and then you hook it to the white and pink wire that's in under here in the uh, harness. It's the thin white and pink wire. Now 08 and later models sometimes change the color of the wire and so you'd have to research it. But it's an easy fix. Two wires and a button. Two prong button. Alright, another common failure. Not so much in the manuals but in the automatics you have that stupid shifter cover. That organ looking shifter cover. That is an easy fix. However, you have to remove the top part of your center console, the bottom part of your center console after you remove these two sides. You get to the plastic uh, shifter bezel. Then you can actually remove that, take off your shifter, and you gotta put it in neutral. There's a bolt on the back, take that off when you're depressing the button, and you could replace that. There's a $20 replacement on online. And then there's another thing that fails are the AC vents. These things constantly break. I've gotten into so many S197s and these are broken out. They're easily fixed. You can remove this by force. You can remove these by force and fix those separately. Uh, or you could take out the whole dash part. And it's easily removed, but that's what it looks like from behind. And one of the common main complaints about the S197 0509 are the leather door inserts. The leather door inserts, there's not one on this car, are one of the most hideous things on this car. They, the glue doesn't hold so they sag. Then they start to peel off. Now you can either try to re-glue them, which seems to never work, or peel them off and underneath of them is a foam you could forcibly, it takes a while to get that foam off, and then this flat black plastic will be exposed, but there'll be glue on it and you have to really clean it. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Your other solution is simply to get a plastic insert from online. 
and then these just simply silicone in place. Easy fix, and trust me, it looks a lot better. And another problem is the wear on the steering wheels. Uh, people that wear rings are uh, scratch, it just wear and tear. These steering wheels go bad and they look horrible. You can actually fix these steering wheels. You just get a, a vinyl repair kit or even uh, shoe polish and you can, uh, you know, sand these and, and get them to look uh, pretty good. If you want to replace your steering wheel, it's a pretty easy process. You remove the two bolts on either side. You must disconnect the negative side of the battery and leave the car for at least 40 minutes. If not, you could deploy this airbag by accident and it's like getting punched in the head by Mike Tyson. Also, you want to see if your airbag has been recalled or not from the uh, defective one. However, once you have it deactivated, remove those two bolts. There's a 24 millimeter bolt there you remove, two little plugs for the uh, airbag and then one plug for the steering wheel. You can take off the whole steering wheel and you can replace it with a new one. And it's pretty easy. You can find those in junk cars for 50 bucks. And another thing that fails is the window auto go up feature. If your window doesn't automatically go all the way up and leaves a little crack, you actually can reset those. There's a YouTube video on how to reset them by doing the buttons. Now let's talk about these seats. The seats in the S197 tend to tear, uh, malfunction, get stuck. They have the rusty rails. These seats are easily replaceable, but if you can't afford to replace them, you can get covers, just get a hog ring set, and you can remove this seat and recover the seat yourself. Also, the e-brake cables, there are two cables underneath the car. Those tend to fail, and they are a pain to do, but you can do them yourself. And another big failure in the S197R is the dash. The gauges tend to fail, get stuck, uh, or need replacing. That dash or gauge pod is easily removable. You can actually pinch and remove this part just by hand after you lower the steering wheel. Then you remove a couple of bolts and you can pull the whole gauge pot out and it's held by one plug. Now you can actually, if you have a problem with stuck gauges, unplug it, replug it, hook your battery back up and then it'll reset itself. Sometimes that will cure the problem. Another way is simply to remove the plastic cover and do it by hand. A few other things on these cars is they come with a two-piece drive shaft. It is utter junk. You will hear the clunking and it'll drive you crazy after a couple of years. If you can afford or get around to getting a one-piece drive shaft, do it. Also, this is a uh, constant suspension failures on this car. Sway bar bushings fail. Uh, the rear end upper control arm and its bushings will fail so replace that the lower control arms will fail the rear sway bar bushings will fail and then the uh, front control arms those bushings also fail so get ready to spend some money on suspension parts Another thing is, this is the 4.6. If you have the 4.0 V6 and you have a time and chain guide failure, there are two time and chains, one in the front and one in the rear of the 4.0. If that one in the rear fails, you're pulling the engine out. It's almost not even worth doing. It's probably better just buying another car and switching your parts over to it. A few things you can also do on this car is switch out to the retro style mirrors and definitely get rid of the lousy antenna. You can add floodlights. This car is a bullet, so it's not going to have floodlights or fog lights. But I have upgraded all the lighting, as you can see. These are all LED. That's LED. That's LED. All right, so that are your that's your 15 plus problems with the S197 05 to 09 Mustang. GT and the V6 4.0. I still recommend you buy one. This is really a good budget car with 
uh, parts readily available, constantly used or new, uh, or replacement, and uh, it's an easy, easily repairable car for a beginner.